two of Nicomachean Ethics is broken into nine sections. Section one analyzes virtues of character and illuminates what Aristotle means by virtue in general and why he considers virtue so important. Virtues of thought can be taught. They take experience and time. Virtues of character come from habit. The virtues of character do not come to people naturally, but they can be acquired through actions and practice. In section two, Aristotle wants his readers to read with the goal of action, not study. The point is not to know what virtue is, but to become good. Virtues can be corrupted by excess and deficiency in action. Like eating and drinking, where too much or too little damages health, virtues, like temperance and bravery, are ruined by either extreme. Aristotle's doctrine of the mean is outlined here, a general explanation he will gradually defend. In section three, people will take pleasure in doing the right thing as long as they're in a virtuous state. Aristotle clarifies the distinction between actions and states. True virtue requires both. Virtue and vice are about pleasures and pains, and everyone seeks pleasure and avoids pain from infancy onward. In section four, Aristotle gets into the hard work virtue requires, arguing any truly virtuous action requires the actor or agent to be in the right state of mind. He connects the doctrine of the mean to human function. The person has to know he or she is doing the right thing, decide to do the right thing, and act from a firm and unchanging state. Many people think they're becoming better people just from listening to philosophical arguments. Virtue, unlike production, focuses on motive instead of efficiency, and Aristotle here uses a doctor analogy. In section five, what exactly is virtue? Since the soul has three conditions, feelings, capacities, and states, virtue is either a feeling of capacity or a state. Feelings include appetites, emotions, desires, and whatever implies pleasure or pain. Capacities are an ability to experience feelings. States are an excess, deficiency, or correct amount of a feeling. Virtues and vices are not feelings, since feelings themselves are morally neutral and do not require any conscious decision. Virtues and vices are not capacities, since we are not born with them. Aristotle concludes virtues and vices must be states. In section six, the key to achieving virtues of character lies in understanding excess, deficiency, and intermediate states, just like in scientific study. Virtue is the state of making a human being good and able to perform their functions well. Intermediate states are often determined based on the person or subject. For instance, too much food for a beginning athlete might not be enough food for an advanced athlete. Thus, virtue is a state consisting in the mean relative to us. In section seven, Aristotle lists the means or virtuous states for each aspect or character. In fear and confidence, the mean is bravery, an excess of confidence, is rashness, and an excess of fear is cowardliness. In most pleasures and pains, the mean is a temperance, an excess is intemperance, and a deficiency in pleasure, a rare state, is insensibility. In small matters of money, the mean is generosity, the excess wastefulness, and the deficiency ungenerosity. In large matters of money, the mean is magnificence, and an excess is ostentatious or vulgarity, and deficiency is stinginess. In great honors and dishonors, the mean is magnanimity, the excess is vanity, and a deficiency is pusillanimity, or timidity. In small honors and dishonors, the mean is someone who desires honor the right way, and in the right amount, an excess is honor-loving, and a deficiency is indifference to honor. In anger, the mean is mildness, the excess is irascibility, and the deficiency is inirascibility. In truth-telling, the mean is truthfulness, while the excess is boastfulness, and the deficiency is self-deprecation. In amusements, the mean is wit, the excess buffoonery, and the deficiency, the state of boorishness. In daily conversations and interactions, the mean is friendliness, the excess is ingratiation and flattery, and a deficiency is quarrelsomeness or a bad temper. In section eight, Aristotle reminds the reader that each character trait has two possible vices, an excess and a deficiency with a virtuous balanced state in the middle. People on the extreme ends of the spectrum may want to appear more moderate than they really are and push people who are more moderate to opposite extremes so they can look better by comparison. A cowardly person calls the brave person rash, so the coward will appear reasonable. In section nine, he gives practical advice for anyone who wants to shape a virtuous character. Avoid the extreme, most opposed to moderation. They should examine their own natural tendencies and be wary of the vices that tempt them. And also, people should remember and beware that everyone is biased toward pleasure, whether it's virtuous or not.